Hey everybody, Joel Oliev here with a quick uh, tutorial on creating a kind of tearing cloth effect in Cinema 4D. Um, I'm going to start out by saying I have no business doing a Cinema 4D tutorial. Uh, Cinema 4D is not a software I'm really comfortable in. I haven't used it that much. Um, my main software that I use nowadays is 3D Max with you know some Maya thrown in here and there. But on a recent project, I uh, was able to do a bit of R&D in Cinema 4D, downloaded the trial from Maxon's website and kind of played around a bit with it and uh, really liked it. I was really impressed with how intuitive it is and how quick and simple it is to kind of set something like this up. So, and I've had a few people ask me how I did it, so I thought, you know, why not throw a little tutorial together and uh, show you guys how I did it. So if at any time you're watching this video and you see me, you know, goof up and make mistakes, well, it's because I have no idea what I'm doing. So. That being said, um, I'll give you a little uh, insight into how I ended up in Cinema 4D. There was a recent project I just finished up. It involved, uh, it was a commercial, it involved uh, two spots that had uh, four shots each. And the whole effect was we had these characters that kind of walked on screen and they had this uh, outer kind of shell of clothing that we needed to have shatter and kind of peel off. You know, break away to reveal you know different clothing underneath. And I tried a bunch of setups in Max using you know various methods using cloth and thinking particles and particle flow and that and tried my as well and it just wasn't getting you know something that I liked and something that was uh, directable in terms of you know a director or a supervisor saying you know well can you make this do that instead of this or change the timing on this make these pieces smaller and bigger whatnot. So I jumped into Cinema 4D and just started playing around and really liked, you know, the way that cloth behaved and it was really simple. And uh, 2 a.m. one night I was doing some searching on Google and Vimeo and a bunch of forums and whatnot and I came across these two uh, little Python scripts that um, when used in conjunction with the uh, cloth tag in Cinema 4D really gave you a lot of control and you know, just kind of allowed you to create this really cool effect really simply and you know really fast and for the life of me i cannot find um who created these uh little scripts or tags so if anybody recognizes um the two tags being used in this setup do let me know i'd love to credit the person who wrote them because they're they're cool little tools and i'm sure lots of people can use them i don't know maybe some of you guys have already used this setup i don't know but um credit is due or credit is due so yeah, if anybody knows where they came from, do let me know and I will credit it, credit them in the video. So that being said, uh, I'm just going to close this and we'll jump into Cinema 4D here. So this is the scene that uh, we were just looking at. Um, pretty simple, a couple, I'll just turn on display here, shading wise, so you can kind of see what's going on. So this was a piece of geometry that was modeled in ZBrush then brought into 3D Max. And then I exported it out as OBJ into Cinema 4D and, and kind of ran this whole cloth setup on it. And the way it works is, you know, you take your piece of geo, you add a couple of vertex paint maps to it, and then you use these two little Python tags here that you can kind of see below. Um, nothing too complex. Um, that being said, I'm not a Python scripter, so maybe it's more complex than it looks like it is, but um, you know, 20, 25 lines. And this guy here is, you know, just a few little calls or variables, whatnot, anyway. So you throw those on top um, along with these vertex maps at a cloth tag and then a uh, cloth belt to kind of pin it in place. And then use these vertex maps to kind of control and direct how the cloth uh, rips apart. So the first step you want to do is I'm going to supply a file, a Cinema 4D file with this tutorial. Because the first thing you want to do is you want to take these two tags. So you have one that's called Grow and you have one that's called Invert. And you just want to select on those and you want to save that tag preset into your user library. So I already have them, so I'm not going to save them. But uh, yeah, select Invert, do the same thing, save tag preset, da, da, da. And then once you have that, you can kind of reset your scene. So I'm just going to reset here. Actually, there isn't a reset. So this is something I find odd, uh, not being a Cinema 4D user. Is there a simple way to just take this 
scene, say, okay, I want to reset and start a new one. Because if I go new, um, later on when I close down Cinema 4D, that scene is still open. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to get started here. Um, first thing you want to do is you're going to create your object. Uh, I'm just going to go with a very simple sphere. Click to display here so I can kind of get an idea of what's going on in terms of polygons. Crank that up to 64. And then I'm going to right click or you can hit C. Go make editable. So now that we have this piece of geo, what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to character here, uh, grab our paint tool. And we're just going to paint a little circle here. And this is what we're going to use. This is going to be the starting point for where the cloth kind of tears. So using these uh, little Python tags, what it does is it takes the vertex paint and then essentially grows it out over the piece of geo to eventually spread that vertex paint all over the object. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to grab that, drag it over. I'm going to name this vertex map, call it initial. And naming these is important because the way the two Python scripts work, or Python tags, sorry, work, it's based off these names. So you want to make sure that your first one is initial. I'm going to grab the second one here. I'm going to rename that one to grow. And then we're going to add our first tag here. So I'm going to go to preset user tags. We're going to go grow. Drag that over here. So if I click on uh, basic here, this is our name. We want to keep that the same. We're going to go into user data. So for initial, we're going to drag our initial vertex map. And then for result, we're going to grab grow. And we have this little checkbox here. Or a little, yeah, I want to turn that on. So now if I select our grow thing here and we hit play, you can kind of see now it's growing to kind of envelop that whole sphere, which is kind of what we want. So the cool thing about it is you can go back later on and you can paint uh, different sections. The only thing you're going to have to do, uh, you want to paint on your initial section here. So for example, if I let me rotate around here, if I want you know various points of kind of action here, what I'm going to have to do, if I go back to grow, that it's not going to carry that data over. So you just delete that, copy it again. Rename it to Grow. And then we'll drag Grow back down in here again. And then if we go back to the beginning, let's Grow again. Now it's starting at those various points. So the only thing you want to make sure is that if you are changing, you want to change these maps, you're going to have to change all of these vertex maps. So with that done, um, oh, there's one more thing I want to show you too. Um, we have these settings in here so we can use noise, which is really cool. So you can kind of break up the edges. So if I go to noise scale, kind of at 10, go back to our grow here and hit play. You can kind of see, well, it's hard to judge in this uh, preview here, viewport, but it adds a bit of noise to the edges of the grow, which is kind of cool. It kind of gives it a little more detail. So the next step, we're going to take our grow tag here, control, drag it over. We're going to rename this one invert. And then we're going to add our second tag preset here, which is prompt full name invert. Whoops, I put my next sphere selected there. Let's add that again. Do, do, do. Invert. And drag that over. So if we go into the user data here, we have initial and result. This time we're going to our initial is going to be the grow tag, our grow map, and then our whoops. And then our result is going to be invert. So now if I select invert and hit play, it's not working. Let's see how we got here. Okay, no, no, we're good. There we go. I don't know what happened there. So now we're getting the inverse of what we had before. So now it's kind of kind of red here. It's kind of growing. So with that done, now all of the uh, heavy lifting, I guess, is done. Uh, next step we want to go to is we want to select our sphere. We're going to add our cloth, cloth here. And we're just going to leave that as default for right now. Um, just leave that for default. And then we want to add a, go back into simulation tags here. We're going to add a cloth belt. And this is what we're going to use to kind of pin our cloth initially, um, pin it in place. 
So I'm just going to go create a simple polygon here. And I'm going to right click, make that editable as well. I'm just going to hide that. Let's turn that off. We'll go back to our uh, cloth belt here. So what we want to do is I want to take that polygon. I want to use that as the kind of pinning point. And then I'm going to select our sphere. I want to select all of our vertices here. So we'll select. I want to make sure that we have tolerance selection on so that it go it selects. Uh, let's turn. I want to select visible elements off. I'm just going to kind of marquee drag everything here, and that way we get all of our points. If we don't do that, and just select like that, then we just get the. Uh, we don't get the back facing, which it, you know, which is kind of what we want. So. Let's go back and do that. Select all of those. Just make sure they're all selected. None of it, so you can see what's going on. And we'll go back into my cloth tag here. And I don't want to go set. And you'll know it's set when those uh, vertices change color. So then we're going to go draw, turn that off. So now if we hit play, does anything happen? Nothing happens right now. Okay. I'm going to go back into pinning. So we want to take our invert map here. We're going to use that as our influence. So right now, um, the cloth belt is being driven by this invert uh, vertex map here. So hopefully, if all goes well, we hit play. There, we're getting some cloth kind of falling down. So you can kind of see how it starts where we painted on the vertex map there. So the next step, now that we have the cloth working, is we want to start tearing it up. So we're going to go back into our cloth tag here. And we're going to use the tear value here. So if you just hit that and then you hit play, you're going to notice you get some weird wonkiness going on. Um, so to remedy that, we're going to select our sphere. Let's go simulate cloth, cloth surface. We're going to drag it drag our sphere into there. So now if we hit play, we should get some kind of nice cloth down. Yeah, so far so good. Now the cool thing, once that's set up, then it's just going in and kind of playing around, which is kind of fun. So um, I'm going to um, reduce gravity. We'll give some wind direction. Give you some wind strength of 10. So now if I hit play, you can see we're kind of getting some really kind of cool uh, fragmenting, cool stuff blowing in the wind. And the really cool thing too is if you go back into uh, tag here, if you play with the size, you can get some really cool effects, almost like it's eating it away, which I thought was kind of cool. Then yeah, it's just you know playing around, uh, coming up with something that you know, suits your taste, I guess, whatever you want. It's very directable in terms of you know where it's breaking, how fast it's breaking. You have uh, pretty much unlimited control. So then we can play around with the forces again. Let's slow the wind down a bit, and then I'm going to add a little collider object in here just for kicks. Let's drag that guy down here. Make a tag, simulation, a little cloth collider. So now when we hit play, hopefully we'll get some collisions happening between our sphere chunks here and our cylinder. Now you may have to up up the sub steps or actually right here. Let's see if we can uh, make this a little longer here so we can kind of see what's going on. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Uh, like I said, it's not too complicated. And again, if um, if anybody knows who created those tags, please let me know. I'd love to uh, credit them in the video and you know just let them and thank them, I guess, for the cool stuff they did. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, do let me know. Um, I'll do my best. Like I said, I'm not a Cinema 4D user, so um, if the questions are too over my head, I won't be able to answer them, but I will do my best to find somebody who can. All right, thanks for watching. Cheers.